Dark Souls, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, and Dynasty Warriors. All games that have impactful and satisfying combat. And if you've ever tipped your toes into game development and wanted to create any sort of combat system, especially real-time action combat, you'll have quickly learned how actually difficult it is to make combat feel good. At least I know I did. I've been working on my action RPG for about a year and a half now, and above all else, even changing engines, nothing has seen more revisions than my combat system. I've had three major versions of it by now, and who knows, it might even get more. But for now, it's in a somewhat stable place, and I would love to share what I have learned to be important for making a good feeling combat system. Screen shake. Let's start with the cheapest and easiest trick of them all, screen shake. It's a bit of a shortcut and you really have to make sure that you don't overdo this because it will look cheap and kind of wacky because frankly, it is. But removing it altogether also makes it feel less impactful overall for your attacks. Even if you do something else in this video perfectly or even all the other things in this video perfectly, some amount of screen shake still does enhance the impact, especially with larger and heavier strikes. There isn't much to this at all. Just looking at a side-by-side -side comparison of some attacks with and without screen shake should give you a good feeling of how simple techniques like this can actually do quite a lot for you. Animation. Animations are obviously important and, to be honest, pretty much the biggest thing that changes one attack from the next. This might be a bit of a no-duh kind of situation, but well-crafted animations can be a real lifesaver. I mean, I myself am by no means a professional animator, and this is footage of my game, and you'll probably be able to tell that. Among other things, this is one area where, at least for my game, I can see a lot of room for improvement. But what should we look for in an animation? Well, broadly speaking, we can split animations into three parts. The anticipation, the action, and the follow-through. When you press that button, the character shouldn't instantly swing their sword at the target. In order for that swing to feel impactful, the character first needs to swing their sword backwards, load up the momentum before swinging through to the enemy for damage. The same holds through for the follow-through. The swing of the weapon has a lot of build-up energy that releases in a short period of time. That energy won't just disappear the moment you hit something. So as your character moves through the enemy with their weapon, they should keep going for a short moment as it slows down after the attack finishes and they reposition themselves to get back into either an idle pose or ready for their next animation. This is what makes the impact feel real. When animating, try to think about how momentum builds up, storing and releasing the energy of the momentum of your weapon. Before moving on to the next part of this list, let's take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Blender Kit. BlenderKit is a huge online subscription-based platform which allows you to download the tens of thousands of assets in their library, ranging from simple models and materials to HDRs and entire scenes. They even have a handful of cool add-ons, and of course, my favorite being the hundreds upon hundreds of different brushes that they offer. Join BlenderKit today, improve your 3D art, and make your entire workflow just that bit more optimized. Through the link down below in the description, you can get 10% off your first month. Timing. Now, timing is a part of animation, of course. The relationship between anticipation, action, and follow through tells us a lot about the movement. A long anticipation with a short action and a short follow through suggests a lot of energy build up very slowly and then rapidly released, making for a powerful strike. Maybe with an attack like that, the follow through can even include a little bit of a stumble. The character brought themselves off balance with such a powerful attack, which also then doubles as a gameplay mechanic because those heavy type of attacks, which usually deal more damage, of course, also are now more dangerous to use because they leave the player open to be attacked afterwards for a second. Look at Dark Souls for a perfectly crafted example of this very balance. But aside from that, we can also look at more traditional animation and the fight scenes in those. How do they make that impactful? You see, usually the impact of something like a punch is held on screen for a little longer than other actions, freezing that image for an extra frame or two so the audience can really feel the impact. 
Hell, sometimes even the whole action portion of a punch animation gets skipped altogether and we just see the anticipation and then go right into the impact. My point is, mimicking that in a game can be pretty tricky. You don't exactly want to freeze the game every time you hit something, because that will honestly just feel like a lag spike, which is not a great feeling. But there are some things that you can do with this. In my own game, as an example again, I do something where the player character and the character that you hit get slowed down for a split second to about 10% of their speed, while the rest of the world around them keeps playing at full speed. This more or less mimics the freeze frame impact that you'll see in animated movies without the game feeling like it's starting to stutter. Visual effects. Now, this is the fun part, and honestly, probably one of the most important parts, the visual effects or the particle systems. Some games depend on this more than others. Take Kingdom Hearts. Any attack you do in these games are like a particle explosion, compared to something like the Dark Souls series where other than hit particles, there's hardly anything here to give your attacks a flashy look. But for the most part, almost any game can use a healthy dose of particles and visual effects. Surround your weapon in flame, add an effect to simulate smear frames, add decals to the ground to show cracks when you swing a heavy hammer. There really isn't all too much to say about this other than if you think you have too many particle effects for a attack animation, usually you don't. And finally, we have the reaction. Frankly, among all the other stuff we have talked about, I think the simple fact that your enemy reacts to being hit properly is probably one of the most important things that you can do. Give them a hurt animation, some knockback, and of course make sure that the damage values of your attacks match with what should be expected for that attack. Heavier enemies should be knocked back less. Some enemies you might want to make feel more imposing, and for those, maybe they don't have reactions to your attacks at all, stoically just taking damage as you hack away at them. Maybe you have a large monster, which only reacts with an animation in the area where it has been hit. Having enemy character respond in a realistic way to how you hit him can really make your game go from you play an attack animation that just goes through the enemy, to making it feel like you hit the enemy physically. This can even go as far as different reactions when you hit something from the left side or the right side. Looking at a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, that takes this concept to a whole new extreme level, with character reactions being super realistic to being wounded, as their animations are largely procedurally generated based on the location of those wounds. Now, any or all of those might apply to your game. Some more so than others, I'm sure, but as a general rule of thumb, keeping these five points in mind when creating your game's combat, I'm sure that you'll be able to make huge improvements to your games. And if you do, please do let me know. You can join my Discord server through the link down below this video and show me how you did. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out BlenderKit for the 10% discount on all of the amazing stuff that they offer. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons, you can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 